Welcome to this episode of Home Bell Workshop. Today, we're gonna make a wind chime. To build these wind chimes, I've got a couple of pieces of this purple heart left. I'm gonna use these for the wooden pieces for the chimes. Now me personally, I've never used Purple Heart for an outdoor project, but doing a little bit of research, it seems like Purple Heart is fairly rot resistant, so I'm gonna give it a try. I think with a good finish to seal it up, it should last quite a while. Purple Heart's very dense and hard, so I feel like that it's gonna hold up well to the elements. Now if you do any research on building wind chimes, I'm pretty sure you're gonna come across a guy named Lee Height. He's got some great resources on building wind chimes. He's got a website with more information than you probably will ever need to build these chimes. Also, he's got a YouTube channel with some how-to videos and kind of explaining a lot of the processes and things. One thing he has on his site are some printable templates. They make it really easy. They're really well put together and you can just choose basically your design and print it off and it has all of your whole locations and it's gonna make this layout and the build a lot easier. So if you wanna build wind chimes, look up Lee Height. His website is leehight.org. So check it out. I'm gonna put a link to his site below in the description. Great resource for wind chimes. My wind chime is gonna have five chimes. So I chose the template set up specifically for five chimes. I'll just set my compass to match the template and draw my circles. Most likely you'll notice I'm making two. One of these is gonna be for a gift, and the other one is for me to keep. I wanna make sure that when I'm drawing my circle that I really get a good center mark. I'm gonna need that later. Now I'll just cut off those discs on the bandsaw. And since I still haven't had a chance to replace my bandsaw blade since I made the sign, I still have a lot of burning, so I'm going to clean that up with sander. Once I have the edges all sanded, I'll take it to my router table and round over the edges on both pieces. Since this wood is so hard, I'm gonna do this in several passes, making light cuts until I get to where I need to be. I started to round over the edges and then I realized it'd probably be easier to work with my cutting template before I round this over. I think it'll be easier to line it up. So I'm gonna stop that process and get these holes drilled and then I'll finish rounding everything off. On the template that I downloaded from Lee Heights website, it has all the locations for the mounting hardware. So I'm gonna cut this out to make it a little bit easier to line everything up. I'll just secure the template to my disc with a couple pieces of tape. Then I'll use a punch to start marking out the holes. But since I have a tiny mark on here from the compass, I'm just gonna center punch it based off of that mark. Now at the drill press, I'll just pre-drill those holes. Then I'll go back and finish my round over. So now I have these pieces all sanded down to 220. One thing about Purple Heart, when you machine it and sand it, it kind of loses that purple look. You can see on this side it's a little more purple, 
but on this side it's more of a reddish brown. One way to get that back is to really just give it some time, let it sit. I'm going to put these outside for a few hours and most of the color should return. At most I may have to wait overnight for it to gain that color back before I put a clear on it. So I'll set these aside and we'll get to working on the chimes. For the chimes, I'm going to use some EMT conduit. This is three quarter inch conduit. You can use just about any kind of pipe for this. Copper tubing, steel, black iron pipe, EMT, whatever kind of tubing you can come up with most likely will work. Another thing that's really helpful on Lee's site is he has a chart for the measurements that you can cut the pipe to actually get different notes. So you can put together a certain chord or a scale or some sort of a pattern that you'd like to hear your chime. From his chart, I've chosen a set of five different notes. Now all I have to do is mark this EMT and cut it down. To cut it down, I'm gonna be using one of these tubing cutters. You could cut it with a hacksaw, a reciprocating saw, pretty much anything that you have to cut metal, you can use. This is just what I'm gonna use. And I'll drop it. Ugh. Let's just try to drop everything while we're at it. Boom. Now I need to deburr the inside. I'm just going to use a round file and get the majority of it. up the insides further I put a small sanding spindle in my drill and I use that to clean up the edges that I just filed. Now I need to drill the holes where we're going to attach the line to hang these pieces of conduit. Another cool thing that Lee also has on his website is the exact dimension from the top of the piece down to where you need to drill the hole for the optimum hang point. Now I'll just drill it on the drill press. I'm gonna use the groove in the top of this aluminum extrusion as kind of a makeshift V-block. Now I'll just clean up the burrs on the outside of the pipe using the countersink. And we'll go back to the round file to make sure that there's no burrs on the inside of those holes. It's kind of hard to see down in there if, to see if there really is a burr or not, but you can kind of look through the tube, see if you see any sharp edges sticking out. Now I'm just going to use some lacquer thinner and wipe down the outside of these conduits. I want to remove any dirt, oil, grease, anything that's going to contaminate the paint we're going to put on. And we want to peel off these stickers. They put these stickers on, barcode stickers. The lacquer thinner will help dissolve the glue on those as well, so that we can get those off. Because we sure don't want to paint over top of that sticker. After four or five hours of sitting outside, the brownish tint's gone and the purple color is returned, so I'm going to spray a couple of coats of clear lacquer. My several coats of lacquer is now dry, now I need to get these things assembled. Most of the hardware is pretty simple, I'm just going to screw eyelets into the holes that I pre-drilled. We just broke one. This is unfortunate. So I was able to drill out the one that I just broke. Problem solved, but in order to avoid that again, I'm using a little bit of paste wax to lubricate the threads. Actually makes them thread in quite a lot easier. Should have done that from the beginning. I'm gonna use some chain to suspend the top. Ah, 
There it is. Now I'm going to work on hanging the chimes. I've got the support base hanging from the ceiling temporarily so that I can work on it. I'm going to use some 50 pound braided fishing line to hang these chimes. I'm going to use the half wrap method of connecting these. To protect the fishing line, I'm going to use some of this small heat shrink tubing. So the way this works is pretty simple. I'll thread the line onto the piece of heat shrink tubing, then thread one end of the line into the tubing from the outside, then thread one end of the tubing into the hole. Now you could cut off a small piece of tubing just enough to act as a grommet, but I kind of like having the piece wrap all the way around. And then work that end of the heat shrink tubing into the hole as well. Then you can pull your line tight and tie the two ends together. And we'll repeat that for all of the chimes. Well, so far that was by far the most tedious portion of this whole thing. Threading these lines, getting it tied up and ready to hang. Just take some time. Had to redo a couple of them. They say the best way to cut this line is with a lighter or a flame of some sort, a candle, whatever. And I find that to be true. I tried to use some scissors and some wire cutters and it just doesn't work that good. But if you touch a lighter to it, it like cuts instantly. So I definitely recommend using a lighter to cut these. Also, you can avoid some frayed ends if you do it that way as well. Now I need to tie the chimes to the support disc. When I tie these up, I'm just making sure that the tops are as even as I can get them. I want all the tops aligned. It works. I'll stack a couple pieces of clear acrylic and cut out just a basic teardrop shape to use as the wind sail. After sanding the edges smooth, I'll drill a hole at the end and thread in another eyelet so I can hang it up. Using some more chain, I'll attach the clacker and the wind sail. And with the sail all attached, wind chimes are done. Check it out. It's even somewhat in tune. I'm really happy with the way these turned out. Not really a hard project at all, but you have gotta do some careful measurements to get everything in tune. And tying these fishing line, that's a little bit tedious, but it's completely doable. So I suggest check out Lee Height's site if you wanna make some wind chimes or just experiment and just cut some pipes to some different lengths and see how it works out. So let me know down in the comments what you think about this project. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I sure would appreciate that. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon down below if you want to get notifications of when I post new videos. Also, to get a little bit of behind the scenes of what's going on in and around the shop, head on over to my second channel, which is called Inside Home Built Workshop, where I do some behind the scenes of what's happening around here. Also, down below, you'll find social media links if you want to head on over to one of those social media platforms and follow me over there. That would be awesome. We can stay connected. So thanks a lot for watching everyone and we'll see you next time. Yeah, this one should be ours. Floor is not quite level, so everything wants to roll off. See, and I wonder why when I download the video footage onto my computer, why my hard drive fills up so quick? <laughs> because I leave the camera running for stuff like this.
The smart thing to do would be to shut it off and only record the footage I need. Obviously, I don't need five minutes of me peeling a sticker and sniffing lacquer like thinner. But, see, then you don't get the cool stuff. Now that I look at it, technically it's not lacquer thinner. It's enamel reducer. That yeah, works though. Now unfortunately, I need 10 of these eyelets to mount all of the chimes on both of these sets and the pack of this size that I bought only had 10. So now I'm gonna go back to the store, pick up another pack because I need one more eyelet. Seriously? <laughs> mm, broke another one. And guess what? The same one that I just drilled out. Ugh! Drilling it out again. After two trips to the hardware store, I have the right eyelets. The first time, I forgot my wallet. Completely left it at home. So I had to come back and go back and pick these up. Luckily, it's only a minute or so from the house, so it's not very far. But still, what a drag to get in the checkout line and realize you forgot your wallet. Oh well, luckily the cashier just held it right there, so I just ran back in, paid for it, and was done. Really? How did that even happen? Yeah.